Alright, so I'm going to jump right into it. This video is about how to start an online chess tournament. If you don't already have leadchess.org and have an account established, I highly recommend that you do. It's done by a nonprofit. It's free and easy to use. Um, so if you're really doing this for like an after school program or for whatever reason, really, Lee Chess is a good spot to do it. It doesn't take long to set up a team and a tournament. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. So we're going to go up to community tab. Of course, once you've already created your account, you can do this. You go to teams. And you can see here in my teams that one, like there's one that I'm a part of, which is the Eric Rosen fan club. So I'm not an administrator here, so I can't create tournaments there. But there's one that I created called Team Chess Counselor. Of course, you'd be a little bit more creative with your name than I have been. And I'm an administrator, so I can create tournaments and make changes. I'm also part of Triton's Chess Club, so someone else created that, but they added me as an administrator so that we can both work together, collaborate. You know, maybe one of us is available to participate in a tournament or oversee a tournament and one of us is not. You really don't have to be available for it. It just kind of depends on what you're trying to accomplish. So, like, if you're working with students and you want to be able to kind of monitor what they're doing and monitor their games, maybe commentate a bit, uh, maybe you're doing a Zoom session with them online, then you're... Well, then that makes more sense, right? So if you wanted to create a new team, assuming this is your first time doing it, this is how you would do it. You fill out this quick form, and you just click new team, and you're ready to go. Really just creating your name, brief intro, entry, I'm sorry, brief introduction. And then if you want to create a team entry code to kind of prevent other people from being able to get into it, then that would make sense to set up that code here and then share it with them privately somewhere else. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and look at, sorry, not all teams, my teams. One of the ones that I have organized. This is what it looks like on the back end. So you can see we have three team leaders, which I think again makes sense for collaborative purposes. And if you're not available for something or you need to delegate someone else to set up a tournament, you can do it this way. Or maybe like your computer stops working or something and you need someone else to kind of step in. All right. There is this chat function here, so everybody can come in here, ask questions, and participate. Um, this I think this feature here is not used as widely among Lee Chess teams, but you know it's there. There's also this kind of tournament list here. So it shows you past tournaments that you've you've run before. It shows you who has participated, and then, well, the number of people participated. But if you click on it, you can see more details. Um, you know, you can see this one was was held eight months ago. You can see the time control we did. And if you wanted to, you can go in and see the games that were played, and you can analyze them yourself, or you can analyze them with the group, right? So let's say there's somebody who did really well, and you want to kind of go over their games, and it's like highlight what they did well or someone had some questions and they didn't do as well as they wanted to and they want to get some feedback from others you can definitely do that and then to the left here is probably what's most important to you here is like the type of tournament you want to set up so for example team battle would be you know you're playing against other teams so it's like you're playing against other schools or other organizations but you're playing different teams on lead chess so if you kind of get this set up you definitely need to collaborate with another team that you'd be playing against or multiple teams that you'd be playing against um, so you could set up it up yourself, or you could join a team battle that's already been set up, right? So, you know, for example, if you're working with like four or five schools and you want to set up a team battle, you're all using Lee Chess accounts, you could definitely do it this way. So that your, your students or your participants or your teammates aren't playing against each other, they're playing against the other opponents, and the team, the, the results are kind of stacked up on who can get the most points, okay? And then we have the arena tournaments, which I would argue is probably the most popular version of team tournaments. This is interesting because um, you're really just kind of seeing who can rack up the most points to be in the top three or top five or whatever. And there is no kind of typically not much of a wait time in between rounds because it's not really rounds. It's like once you finish your game, the next available person like you get matched up with and you play right away, right? Whereas opposed to Swiss tournaments, there are rounds. So if you set up to have like six rounds of play. Um, let's say you're playing 10 minute games and you have six rounds of play. No one would start their second round until after the first round is completed for everybody, right? Whereas in arena tournaments, it's not really set up that way. As soon as you finish your game, the, the computer's like looking for the next person you can play and it matches you up, right? So if you finish a game sooner than others, then you, know, you have more chances to get more points, right? So Swiss tournaments, um, I'm not going to get into that one. I'm going to show you because it's a little bit easier to do Swiss tournaments. I'm going to show an example of looking at team tournaments. I'm sorry, arena tournaments. So you create a name for it. Like this is around Thanksgiving time. So maybe I'll have like the Thanksgiving break tournament um, for our university. You can choose if you want to be rated or not, which just means if you know if they win or lose, they gain or lose points. It could be just kind of kind of casual matches where you don't lose points, but you still get bragging rights for winning, right? And I don't mean like points in the tournament. I mean like points for their personal established rating, which kind of tells their skill level, right? 
you can change if you can change it from standard to another variant if you like so i know a popular one is king of the hill which if you haven't heard of that before basically means whoever can get their king to the cent center four squares of the board first then they win as long as that king is not in danger um, which is a very popular one as well but typically we see standard games played you can set the initial clock times so you know let's say you want to set it for 10 minutes on both sides of the clock and you want to add a five second increment which just means that every time you make a move you gain an additional five seconds now another idea uh, another part of the appeal of arena tournaments is you set the duration so you can make the whole tournament last however long you'd like let's say you wanted to make it last 90 minutes so once 90 minutes is over the tournament is over right even if someone's in the middle of a game and you know they don't get points after that finishes nine minutes is the cutoff there they still finish the game but they don't get the points for it um so this is perfect if you only have a certain amount of time whereas with swiss tournaments it especially if you have increment attached to it it may go longer than you anticipate it to but if time is not really a big issue or if you have more of a buffer then you know swiss tournaments can make sense too and of course you can put your uh, tournament description which you know your members would see if we take a look at advanced settings, again, you could add a tournament entry code, but it's not really necessary if you already have one to get in in the first place. You can also set it so someone's done a minimum number of rated games before they play in the tournament. You could set up certain ratings are allowed to join. So this is more like, you know, if being a little bit more specific on who can participate in this tournament. You can also be even more specific than that and actually plug in who's going to be playing in the match. So if you already know ahead of time who's participating, you can go ahead and plug that in. Then there's these additional features which are interesting. Uh, you know, chat room's pretty self-explanatory. So you have a chat room just like you would have a Zoom chat room. Berserk is pretty cool. Um, you know, some it, it depends what you're trying to do. But to Berserk basically means before you start the game, you can select Berserk and it cuts your time in half. Not your opponent's time, just your, your time. So if you're playing a 10-minute game, 10 minutes on both sides of the clock, you select Berserk, and then you have 5 minutes and they have t they have 10 minutes, right? And if you, st if you still win that game, even though you're taking a 5-minute handicap, then you get an additional point um, for winning that game. So it's a risk to do it, but it's kind of fun, um, but a little nerve-wracking. So you can choose to have that option available. So it's not, even if you click it, it's not mandatory that it'll happen. Um, then also Arena Streaks. So after two wins, consecutive wins grant four points instead of two. So if someone's winning a lot, they are more likely to stack up more points and you know have a higher chance of winning the tournament, right? And then that's it. You create a new tournament and you kind of you're pretty much good to go. Um, but before I let you go, I'm going to show you kind of what it looks like on the back end. Let's see here. Let's look at we hit 10k arena. So it kind of looks like this on the back end. Of course, you wouldn't have the trophies to set up already. Uh, this is just what it looks like when the tournament's over. You have the chat room on the left-hand side. You can see the players in the center. And this is good to see when you first set up, you can see who already registered for the tournament. And that's important so you get a good idea of like how many people you need to get started, but also if you need to do some more promotional efforts to get people in. And then you can see their results. So you can kind of see, if you click, you click their name, you can see who they played against and how well they did. And then you can also, like I mentioned earlier, you can see the games that they played and evaluate it further. All right. So I hope that helped. If you have any questions, I would love to hear them in the comments of how to set up a tournament on Leeches. Bye.